Hello and welcome to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. Today I am so pleased and honored to welcome my good friend Mel Di Giantomasso, who's going to discuss with us and show us um, these wonderful websites of products and books and religious communities who have wares to to help support them that we can uh, benefit from for Christmas that we can use for gifts and. Uh, and for spiritual growth. So I'm so glad, Mel, that you could join us. Thank you so much for coming on today. Well, thank you, Monique. You are a dear friend to me as well. I'm just so grateful that you've asked me to uh, to join you in helping our viewers to be inspired to go out and and purchase these these beautiful things that are available. Like we have to be very intentional now about uh, being Catholic and not being afraid to be Catholic and to share that our faith with uh, not only other Catholics, but beyond that. So we uh, we have a good show, I think, in store here. This is going to prompt a lot of discussion, I think. So, and that's my hope anyways, yeah. <laughs> and it, it is, I, I, I admit, it's a little bit late, but yeah. this is a keeper for next year as well. So it's, <laughs> and for birthdays, and, and for any kind of that's gift. Right. <laughs> this exactly. one is not only for Christmas. So Sorry. why don't we start with a prayer? Mel, can you start us off with a prayer? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> it's so beautiful in Latin. I well, loved it. I want to learn it. I have to learn it. Yeah, yeah. I hope it, I hope it will inspire others to do that. Uh, it's something that I I decided to do. I think it was about two years ago um, with my young daughter, um, who's now well, she'll be nine, and I thought I would pass along this beautiful, uh, you know, <laughs> traditional prayer that we have to. Um, learn again so i thought this is a great excuse for me to learn that and I, when i first started i thought it was going to be impossible there was no way i could wrap my tongue around the latin and <laughs> but with with practice sorry practice and repetition and of course you know the inspiration of the holy spirit to give you those graces it's amazing so we now pray our rosary in latin with the basic the prayers with the uh, yeah well the at least the our father the hail mary and the glory be and we're building on that we're going to start praying you know, the Apostles' Creed and um, the Fatima prayer and the St. Michael prayer, hopefully we'll, we'll get there. So. Oh, yeah. wow. God bless you. That's amazing. That's Thank beautiful. <laughs> we that love is, it. And, and I mean, it's so powerful against the devil. They, he hates Latin. So. Absolutely. That's right. And that's another reason why I hope more Catholics will, will do that because there is true uh, power in that. Not, not from us, of course, it's, it's been, uh, imbued into the language by God the Father, so that we have this special gift of being able to pray these beautiful prayers in a language that is reserved for our Catholic faith. And uh, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. And, you know, we are still in Advent right now. I decided that maybe the Hail Mary in Latin was appropriate because Advent really is, it should be a Marian season. Of, of, of us, you know, entering into Mother Mary's Immaculate Heart so she can form us um, to receive Jesus more profoundly every Christmas. Um, of course, not only commemorating his birth and his incarnation and gratitude for that, but also for his second coming. I mean, that's the beauty of our Catholic faith is that we are, you know, beyond time here. So it's not just the birth, it's also his, his second coming. And uh, it's a great way to immerse ourselves and, and deepen our devotion to Mother Mary. That's the reason why I have this beautiful image of, Mother Mary holding the Lord Jesus. Oh, we are beautiful. final week of, of Advent, um, which is, I mean, it's, it was a short Advent. I don't know about you, but it's like, ah, yes, where did it it's going to be I'm Christmas ready. already. I'm not ready. Yeah. <laughs> we, we never are perfectly ready, but that's okay. Um, and that's you know, a beauty. Yep. You mentioned, you know, the import, how it is a Marian season. We just mm -hmm. interviewed uh, Father Elias Mary, who who found uh, Sister Agnes Asagawa in a, mm -hmm. in a home in Japan because she was being hidden, right? And he found her. Well, he was talking to us a bit about Our Lady and her role as co-redemptrix. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he said, when you look at our Lord on the cross, mm -hmm. 
she can literally say, this is my flesh, this is my blood, you know? Beautiful. And so, so when she's at the foot of the cross, she unites with him. And in that sense, she is, you know, co redemptor. It was such a beautiful image. I, I, it stuck with me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. These things I think are just, we can't ponder them enough. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, for me, it's, it's just, it's such oh. a beautiful. And yeah. you know what he said as well? I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. But this go, is exciting. Go, go. It's you good. know what he said? He said that at the wedding of Cana, you know, when she asks him, you know, they have no wine. And he says, woman, you know, it's not my time has not come. Correct. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, how could he talk to, that way to his mother? Mm -hmm. right? No. It's, yeah. But actually, what was happening is that, you know, his hour had not come. He, it wasn't time for him yet to start the weight of the cross. But she, in saying what she did, and when she said to them, you know, just do as he tells you, mm -hmm. she was giving permit her yes, her fiat, to accepting to offer her son as victim, to yes. get him on that road to Calvary. Yeah. So it was like she started that by at that moment. I thought that Absolutely. was really that was. Wow. It's very profound. I, I often mm -hmm. ponder that too. And um, a few years ago, yeah, I, I realized that. Because a lot, like you say, a lot of people take that in the wrong way. Like, oh, how yeah, you know, it was very rude of him to talk to his own mother like that. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. you're not, you're not understanding <laughs> yeah. what that moment was. She was giving him permission to to do the mission that he was born to do. He was, and he, in his humility, humility was asking her to kind of interrupt his timeline. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is exactly. kind of crazy. It's like, my goodness, how people don't see that. You know, you know, we just have to really be mindful that our Lord deeply loves Our Lady and would never, you know, talk to her in, in a disrespectful way. It's, it's, it's so much deeper than that. So That's we could true. go on and on about all that. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, oh, by the way, uh, some people are asking, you know, how I met you. Well, ah. I first met your father. Yes. And when our when my oldest my I have four kids and my two oldest are up to twenty six years old now. So yeah. my when I when they were little, we used to scout you know different churches who had um, uh, what is it Saint All Saints parties instead yeah, of going to yeah, Halloween, yeah. we went to All Saints parties and yeah, inevitably yeah. your dad would have a booth <laughs> yeah. because they had booths you know for all the saints and whatnot with games and things and your dad had the corner booth and he was the psalm reader yep. that was our favorite booth <laughs> so we would go and he had a psalm he would read us our own psalm it was mm -hmm. wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah i have very good memories of that as well um and uh yeah with his his you know rubber schnoz and he was you know writing character he had the dry ice effect you yes, know, walking the turban, up, I think, right? you know, with this yeah. whole play on the palm reader, of course, it's not the palm reader, it's the psalm reader. And <laughs> I, I think it, I think it left a lot of good memories over the years for people. And maybe we can inspire our, you know, these, our viewers to, to do that for <laughs> the upcoming, yeah. upcoming uh, All Hallowtide celebrations. Yeah, we have to, uh, we have to do better with that too, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. Yeah. And then after that, we met through the, well, we, we were both in the Rosary Apostolate. Yeah. In the rosary in schools. Yeah. That was beautiful. Beautiful time. I was only with the Rosary Apostolate for about three years. Uh, our dear sister, uh, Marilena, here in uh, the Archdiocese of Toronto, she started that. Gosh, it's got to be 20, I think 25 years ago. But uh my three years of involvement were such a formative for my my faith and for my devotion to Mother Mary. So I'm just so grateful for that opportunity to have done that. It was a real privilege, and uh, and you as well. You know, we think we're we think we're going into the schools to teach the children the Rosary, but what we don't know is that Mother Mary is actually taking us into her Immaculate Heart, informing us. Um, I think even more so than we're you know forming the children. That's but right. uh, no, it's it was a real gift. So yeah, and it was so <laughs> neat to be able. I had the little ones. I love doing the little, you know, teaching the little ones, and and I, just to tell them yeah. how loved they are by Our Lady, you know, and our Lord. Mm -hmm. Just that 
that feeling that they're not alone and teaching them, you know, to keep that rosary under their pillowcase and grab it when, you know, it's like grabbing Mother Mary's hand when they have a nightmare and to, to pray those beads before they go to bed, to, to offer these roses, make this bouquet to Our Lady, you know. It was so, there's, it, it was so beautiful to see them because they're so innocent and just how they just, they were in awe. I, and I keep thinking, you know, sometimes I see them now when they're, and they're older and they're saying, you know, we sometimes think back on those days when when things are not so bright and sunny these days. We think yeah. back of those days when you told us we are loved by Our Lady. And it really yeah. is a message that they need to, to hear. There's so much mental illness nowadays. And mm -hmm. I keep thinking if they understood just how loved they are, yeah. they would have Absolutely. a place to go. Yeah. Well, I always wanted the little ones, but uh, Mother Mary always had other plans for me. <laughs> and so I was with the high school students, usually in, in you know, grade seven, grade eight in high school. But, you know, and that can be intimidating, you know, when you're trying to go in and pray the rosary yes. with them. That's scary. <laughs> These high schoolers. And uh, yeah, but so many beautiful graces there, too, um, when yeah. you realize that they may be physically big, but interiorly they are hurt and wounded and lost and and they were staring you know they'd be staring at you <laughs> up in front of the you know I was in the chapel with the high school stu students and uh how many beautiful moments of of hearing them come out of their shyness to actually pray the Hail Mary and my my prayer for them was if they only pray one Hail Mary in their life let it be just full of grace for them yes a good and, one and just surrender them to our mother. And what a beautiful privilege to be part of that, to do that. And I still pray for those students, you know, I may not have known who they are, but Mother Mary knows each one of them um, and knows their stories. And so, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful time. So I'm, I'm glad we both <laughs> had that experience. So, yeah. And then through the consecration of St. Joseph, we really <laughs> met in person and yeah. then we started the Esther's group. Yeah. Amazing. What a grace. Tell us about the Esther's group. Yeah. So Esther's kind of was uh, an interesting development through COVID, through 2020. Um, I was really praying to the Lord to guide me to other sisters in Christ who were seeing things the way that I was seeing them. And, you know, I'm sure our viewers would know that there were, <laughs> there were some challenges through COVID where, you know, you kind of felt alone in, in the way that you were perceiving things. And I, I just knew there, there was, you know, things were not right. There was something very fishy going on. So long story short, um, I, you know, through one-on-one -on -one, heart to heart conversations with um, some friends, um, I realized, yes, there are others that are questioning all of this. And um, we ended up uh, just deciding that we were going to start meeting in person <laughs> Uh, even in, under some interesting circumstances with the lockdowns, um, and what a what a grace that was to be able to do to do that uh, with the faith that God had a plan, um, and it certainly was Mother Mary's plan because our first uh, meeting we actually we just wanted to get together and just be be with one another, uh, and we all had 100% consensus that when we were going to, going to meet, which we were hoping was going to be like once a month, that we were going to pray the rosary. So that was already our mother indicating to us that this was her her doing. Um, and from that, um, I so I, I, I was inspired by the book of Esther, and of course, Esther 414, which is for such a time as this, you were born. Um, and I just felt that that was really inspiring. Um, and if you read the book of Esther, uh, I would totally invite our viewers to read the entire book of Esther. Man, there's a lot of parallels. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, yeah, that was beautiful. So that was October 2020. And then, and then we just kept kind of going from there and our group was growing and it was such a beautiful thing to have these ladies come on board and just feel so welcomed because it was so isolating and, and all the persecution and misunderstandings that were happening within families and within you know, friend, friend circles of friendship that were being tested during that time. I think our Esther's group was a real, a gift of grace. It was, it was our, our safe space yeah. <laughs> to, 
to be together and just to pray and to, you know, share the burdens that we were kind of going through, but, and yet be so encouraged. I mean, all our Esther's groups meetings were amazing. They were just so grace filled and, and they and, were focused on reparation. Right? Absolutely. I know. And that, that really came through clearly. One of our, our Esther's group members was very um, aware of our lady of Fatima and, and you know, the real messages there. Um, so for me, that was very formative. I, I had known a little bit about our lady of Fatima, but had never, never really done a deep dive into you know, the real message there, excuse me. And, uh, and that was huge. It was, and so many things came from that. We had so many amazing missions, yeah. um, you know, so it wasn't just about contemplative gathering together and praying, but was actually, you know, action oriented too. So a lot of good things I think came from that um, yeah. first Saturday devotion. We were trying to promote that within our own little corner of the world and encourage um are faithful to get serious about that. Um, and yeah, so many, I mean, that, that could be a whole other show money. <laughs> yeah, it could. And I'm but, mentioning uh, it yeah. because I think it can give ideas to our viewers who feel alone, but yes. who have, you know, we, we, we talk about having to wanting to pray, wanting to pray, but then we don't actually do it. When you have yeah. the incentive of a group of a support, you know, to support you and pray together, mm -hmm. you know, where, where two or more are gathered, our Lord is present. Right. And especially with reparation, our Lord has been asking for reparation so much to so many visionaries who are still having messages. Correct. This is the time for reparation. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can do this too at home. You know, you, you invite a few friends and you pray the rosary together and, I had a few prayers I know with us. We every week we tried to change it up a bit. We had the rosary and then we had other prayers. I I tried mm -hmm. to bring up some prayers of different saints and whatnot. And yes. beautiful prayers. The old prayers are so beautiful and humble. You know, I, I and love powerful. That. And powerful. And you did you did such a beautiful job with that. It was so wonderful to see you just do the you know the legwork and and research and and I mean you are you the Lord was preparing you for that I think that role for a while and uh, it was so edifying uh, when we would come together and pray those prayers of reparation and um, and then yeah you see what it the fruit of, of that was mm -hmm. it was yeah it still is <laughs> and it grew so fast yeah. we were like twenty one or twenty two and it was yeah. getting harder to to yeah. find homes big enough I so. know. Yeah. Well, we did it somehow, but yeah, so uh, eternally grateful for those friendships oh, yes. and uh, lifelong friendships. So, yeah. So Good. now to get to our topic, um, <laughs> our topic is, well, we're, we wanted to give you ideas mm -hmm. to give gifts that have particular meaning for Christmas, you know, gifts that are more than just a gift. For example, we have a list of religious communities who are either in need of donations or who are who have something to something wonderful to sell because you know how Pope Francis has been shutting down a lot of the contemplative groups contemplative uh, orders unless yes. they are able to sustain themselves and so they need help now we need to, we need to sustain them mm -hmm. through our our donations through buying you know what they what they are what they make so today we're going to discuss some of that we're also going to discuss a few items that are really particularly beautiful and 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 then books that mm -hmm. help in our spiritual growth. So I'm going to share the screen again. I have to say I am new to this technology, so please bear with me. I hope yeah. I don't get the spinny wheel of death. But <laughs> so I, okay, so if, I, if I go blank a little bit, that's because I'm trying to deal with the tech. Okay. So, <laughs> no worries. Okay, good. So the first one is the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles. Oh, I don't so know if you... So good. My favorite. Sorry. <laughs> Aren't they? They're I'm mine too. Bias, I... Sorry. <laughs> oh, I new. love them. Yeah. So they have, they have, they just came out with a book for, for children on um, oh. the continent. But you see this, this is their founder, Mother Wilhelmina. And they just mm -hmm. found out that she had been corrupt. She passed away four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And they had to unearth her body for some reason. I think there was a, there was flooding or something, and mm -hmm. they found out she was probably incorrupt. Yeah. So that was amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful story from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. It and the is. fact that her entire habit was intact 
that is so powerful. Like what is God trying to say through that? Uh, we have to preserve the tradition of our faith. And, and as her sisters would say that sister Wilhelmina would die for that. And she, and she is now, yeah, God is using her as a powerful witness. I think to that our, was, to the faithful. Mm -hmm. That was important for her. The, the habit was a big part of why she, she started this. She wanted to continue this tradition. Absolutely. With the habit. And so, and their music is, oh, they sing angelic. like, angels exactly and yeah. i don't know if you if you follow father pilari was he used to say the rosary for life site news yes and mm -hmm. then he continued on with his own channel on youtube yeah. regina angelorum and mm -hmm. every day at noon he prays the rosary it is the most beautiful rosary it is so calming and beautiful prayed in front of the the tabernacle i the the blessed sacrament i think i think he's actually there at their convent and wow. um, and their and he uses their music as uh, between the the decades. It's so beautiful. So Absolutely. if you would like, and and they also make uh, vestments, traditional vestments, mm -hmm. and they sell their sheet music. They sell their albums, which are so beautiful. I really strongly encourage you to look them up. Benedictinesofmary.org. We'll have all the links in the video description, but benedictinesofmary.org beautiful i have their so, advent at ephesus that i bought oh my goodness i think it was 10 years ago mm -hmm. when they released it i i came across a little um video of a story about it because they they had invited a grammy award-winning you know sound engineer i guess i don't know if i'm getting my roles mixed up but he you know he was invited to go and record them and this was this beautiful way of them sharing their their gift as a cloister of nuns who do not go out into the world. And yet they do these beautiful prayers and oh, why a grace and a gift. And I think it was like top, it was like one of the top albums for a long time there in, I, I don't, I don't know what the category was, but I mean, I, I just love, love, love their music. Um, so yeah, I have it playing in the car all the time, especially during Advent. I don't know about you, but I find that, you know, when you're listening to these radio stations on occasion, which I very rarely do, but are even out trying to do shopping and you're hearing these kind of so-called Christmas, <laughs> Christmas music, I find it kind of cloying now. It's just very, oh, it's like, it's not, A, it's not even Christmas yet. <laughs> and B, it's just not, they're, I don't know, they're not, they're not true Chris, tr Christmas, you know, themed music. So it's for me, true. I just find it's a way to help myself and my my little one when I'm driving her to school to just be right in in that Advent preparation again that Marian season. So yeah, highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And highly. so they're also building a new monastery, the Saint Joseph uh, Monastery. So they yeah. they're asking for you know you can enroll. Um, you can you can donate, and they also have something. They're they're starting a shrine. They started. They have a a mother's shrine, and now they're going to build a father's shrine. And so you can enroll someone, a, a father or a father figure in your life, and they'll That's have amazing. a plaque there in that in that. Uh, yes, so it's wow. very nice. I didn't uh, even know about that. So this is great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know all the details. I think okay. What's happening? No, uh -oh. system is just a little <laughs> spinny wheel of death slow. Okay, there we uh -oh. go. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. Wow, beautiful. Um, as of 2022, the National Sh Shrine for Mothers has no counterpart. The construction of the Monastery of St. Joseph resuscitated this inspiration. So make your commemorative gift in honor of a father, whether it, it be a physical father, spiritual father, or mentor, who has been a father figure for you, the living and deceased who have been enrolled at the shrine will be perpetually remembered in prayer by the sisters and the visitors to the shrine. Mass will be offered at least once yearly for all who have been enrolled. Sponsorships are available for the statue, the altar, the fountain. Engraving opportunities are available. So mm -hmm. look at the path, how beautiful that is. It's going to be lovely. It's, of course, they have yeah. huge, like for, for big donors as well. Yeah. Sure. And there's the little for little donors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think those are the bricks on the road. Oh. 
Wow, that's beautiful. Beautiful and so creative in terms of inviting people to participate at whatever level that they can, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's wonderful to hear. So good. And okay. And they also have something for priests where you can oh, wow. give tribute to a priest who has been an instrument of grace for you or your loved ones. That's or if amazing. you are a priest. And you want to consider making a gift in Thanksgiving for your priesthood. So they're mm -hmm. going to have plaques in the new monastery of St. Joseph. Amazing. So Amazing. And then, of course, we have novenas of masses. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This is going to go up. Um, yeah. <laughs> so sorry for my slow system. But there it is. So they have novenas of masses, $15. Um, Okay, so in honor of the most pure heart of St. Joseph on March 19th, the Lord's most sacred heart, Our Lady of Sorrows, etc., etc. So there Beautiful. we go. Beautiful. And then, then of course, uh, they sell their sheet music and uh, and calendars and cards and all kinds of things. But it's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. convent and community, you know, to, to support. Yes. yes. And I'm sure there, you know, the word is going to spread, especially because of this alleged miracle of sister Wilhelmina being an, um, an incorruptible. So we'll pray we'll pray that this is a real witness to the world. I, I, I heard that there were a lot of people making a pilgrimage to, I think it's Gower, Missouri. If I'm that's pronouncing right. that. I think that's what it is. Yes, yeah. I think that's it. yeah. So that's, it's so beautiful to see people, you know, physically going in person, you know, that's the beauty of our faith. You know, we're making yeah. a spiritual pilgrimage, but you know, Matter matters, and God wants to, us to use our bodies to walk <laughs> and move so and go, and and He wants to, you know, just bestow us with so many graces when we when we do these things, especially together. So yeah, it's it's beautiful to see this community flourishing the way that it is, and it's a traditional community. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, very good. Oh, and this. So this, okay, I had to, to yeah. go to the next one because it I don't know how long it takes to spin, but here's yeah. this is the Fraternité Apostolique Saint-Benoît-Joseph-Labre. This yeah. is the website for our beloved Father Michel. Yeah. So Father Michel Rodrigue is building a refuge with, um, uh, there's one for families that he's building now. He has one for priests and one for uh, lay consecrated women, I think. Wow. But he has Amazing. to, the father gave him until March or April, or is it May now? I forget. Anyway, to build the one for families. But wow. he's in need of funds now because, as it turns out, the costs have really risen. Mm -hmm. And it costs $100 an hour for construction oh. people to come. Wow. He doesn't have the funds, obviously. But you can see a little bit. I wanted to show you the French side of the site because it shows mm -hmm. pictures of what they're doing. So they're preparing literally as a refuge. They have farm animals. They have, a, uh, you know, anyway, they're building for a refuge. And um, so, yeah, so they Amazing. and they're going to be welcoming possibly thousands of people mm -hmm. a lot of people want to want to be there you know after the warning because when we'll all be going to, into well those of yeah. us who are in a state of grace will be able to go to refuges mm -hmm. and um and he says you know well pray hard pray to god the father if you want to come you know and some of the, some people will just wake up here so i'm hoping i can be one of them i don't know i hope i hope i'm there with you <laughs> It would be wonderful. Would be great. <laughs> so yeah. he is one community. His is one community I really want to help. Xavier spent a week there and he said, um, you feel it the moment you step out of the car that it's anointed. He yeah. said, the, 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 the troubles of the world leave you. Literally, he felt an instant difference. He stepped out of the car and the peace that he felt coming out of the car. He said it was, and they are so loving and kind. He said, you know, they live truly like our Lord meant for us to live. They are so loving towards each other. If they ever argue, it's only to argue because they're saying, no, I'll do it. Don't you, you don't bother. You know, I'll do it. Take care. I'll take care of you. Aww. You know, they, it's that kind of community. It's yeah. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, if you if you have it in your heart to give to them, please, you know, this is 
this is a well worthy um, uh, uh, community. Endeavor. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and so the website is benoitlabre.org. We'll have it in the link, in the links in the video description, but it's yeah. B E N O I T L A B R E.org. Yeah. Beautiful. So mm. there we go. So another one is this one. Mel, you can tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah. Okay. So this, yeah, Purgatory and Arch Confraternity. Um, I had heard about this community years ago. And I've been really praying about enrolling my family. Um, from what I remember, they they are a specific uh, traditional community of priests that live mm -hmm. on. Uh, I think it's called Papa Strance. Um, I did. I have heard what it means. Of course, I'm not remembering it now. But I think you can easily Google it. But uh, I think the of, Isle of Wight, maybe. Could be. I I think it's. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's off the coast of Scotland, mm -hmm. but don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'm not very good with my geography, but, um, but they are like a kind of an isolated community of priests. Um, and, and every day they are disciplined. I think they get up at like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh my in, goodness. Yeah. In prayer. And then they're offering the traditional Latin mass for the holy souls in purgatory specifically uh but you can enroll your family so not only your deceased members but also your living members uh of oh, the family powerful. which is super powerful as we know uh well which i didn't know until just a few years ago that you know offering a mass for the living is actually that much more oh, efficacious God. right yes. <laughs> like it's who knew <laughs> i didn't well, know it clearly wasn't it's well formed but it's beautiful it's to be able to do this and you can do like a per it's i think you um you can do like a perpetual enrollment. So they're offering these masses in perpetuity, oh, which is pretty amazing. That's um, powerful. So that yeah. is worth, my goodness, don't give me presents. Give me this. Exactly. Well, <laughs> you know? this, is, this is, yeah. I mean, what better way to use oh. our, our money to help gain as much graces as we can so that we can we can be yeah united in the beatific vision i mean i i don't know i just think we really have to do better at making these intentional decisions to decouple from the material world and the consumerism and all this crazy christmas marketing you know let's get really serious about about these things and these are beautiful communities that are you know making their sacrifices and doing this for yeah. eternal life not just you know temporal material benefits this is this is really important work so yeah i just thought Absolutely. i'd give them a plug because uh, i think they're a unique community in that way um mm -hmm. i think they're called the trans alpine redemptorists <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You've got Bit it. of a yep. mouthful, but um, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hope our viewers can uh, tap into the link and just find out more and really prayerfully discern if this is something they'd like to do for their oh. family. I think it'd be beautiful. <laughs> That's them right there. That's the island they're on. Ah, yes. Papa Stronze, you're right. Papa Stronze, yeah. Yeah, there's a little documentary. I think people can um, Google the YouTube video. There's a, There was a... A gentleman who was not, you know, someone I think he considered himself an agnostic. So he went to go and spend, uh, I think, one night on the island. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful, beautiful to see how, like you just mentioned with Father Michel in the community, he immediately felt welcomed, um, even oh, though he, yeah. he wasn't Catholic and he, you know, was barely a believer. <laughs> and yet the, he, he, I think he could sense the supernatural um you know <laughs> the supernatural love that was just present in the community even though he was like this is crazy they're getting up at three o'clock in the morning and i have to do the same thing like oh my <laughs> but what a what a beautiful witness um so yeah i think that documentary was from many many years ago i don't know when this community was founded but they've been around for a little while but i think um yeah i hope to see them grow and flourish as well especially because Rome is on the hunt now for <laughs> our mm. traditional communities, but we all know that mm, it, they they'll never be crushed. I mean, this is this is so yeah. beautiful, and this is truth. You know, the truth truths of our faith and the power of the mass being offered for souls. Man, it's definitely money worth uh, 
worthwhile spent. So <laughs> I great. hope. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So let's go to the next one. The next one is similar, but in France. Oh, so very good. It's in Montlijon. Montlijon. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's in Brittany or Normandy. Oh, wow. But again, you entrust your beloved to the prayer of the shrine. And Beautiful. I think it's also either the living or the dead. Mm. And uh, offer a mass, enroll your beloved in the fraternity, living Beautiful. or deceased spiritual fraternity of Our Lady of Montlijon, so that they may henceforth benefit from the perpetual mass celebrated for them on a daily basis. Wow. Present a prayer petition. Yeah, I, I, I got a few enrollments there. Beautiful mm -hmm. community. In really special so here it's a monijon oh did i i forget did i give the other one the other link the other link was archconfraternity.org so right so here it's monijon.org it'll be in the video description but uh monijon.org wow that's so. beautiful uh image there of the uh the church and the, and the statues there so amazing oh man <laughs> Yeah, it's sad that we don't, we're not building so many of these beautiful churches anymore. No. Okay. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to, as they say. But hopefully we'll get back on track. Let's just keep praying for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the next site is the Pauline sisters, the Pauline, the daughters of St. Paul. Uh, their, their mission, their vocation is through the written word. And so they write books for teens, for kids, for adults, all kinds of books, uh, beautiful things. My kids grew up on their books. So beautiful. I really, it's yes. a lovely way to to help mm -hmm. the nuns. The spider's gift, I think. Isn't that Rimino, right? No, it's not. But anyway, they have so they have all these beautiful books for kids yeah. and all. I don't know if you can yeah, see. Yeah, it's beautiful to see the sisters, see? they, you know, especially – on certain times of the year, they'll actually travel to our, our parishes and yes. set up their at, in the narthex of the church. And that, that's a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and these it sisters is. are doing their best to, you know, be like St. Paul and just evangelize mm -hmm. and proclaim the good news and all these beautiful um, creative ways. And so really it's, it's good to know good resources for solid Catholic resources um, oh, yeah. or sorry, good organizations that provide these resources because yeah, you kind of have to do your research. <laughs> I've learned that yeah. uh, over the years that sometimes you think something's pretty solid and then you kind of realize, Oh no, that's not as, it's not <laughs> right. yeah. So not as these... orthodox as you should Yeah. Beautiful. And here they have for teenagers or for uh, older kids. Mm -hmm. so these good. are graphic novels. My Nicholas likes them. They, mm -hmm. he's getting one for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they have others. They have really beautiful things. Um, yes. A lot of saints books. These are the nuns who, who are writers. Oh. And they Good. we've seen them at our church. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes. So, their, yeah. their website is pauleinestore.com. Very good. I didn't show you many of the regular books, but they have like the, the saints books, you know, like, um, let's see, where would I find that? They have prayer books, but, um, well, anyway, I'll let you take a look, but yeah, they have all these saints books that are like, they, they publish saints books that we can't find anymore. Things like that. Oh, it's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. The guide. Can never get enough of the yeah, saints. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So paulinestore.com. Very good. Okay. Next on our list. Ah, Mystic Monk's Coffee. Have you ever had Mystic Monk's Coffee? Well, um, funny enough, you should mention that. I did buy their little pods at a local Catholic bookstore where I live. Um, they oh, yes. Kind of like, you know, those, yeah, those coffee pods, those disposable ones. I don't want to put brand names out there, but, um, but yeah, they, they, they made them. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a go really good coffee <laughs> and I like coffee and uh, yeah, this is, this is a great apostolate for these, uh, this order. So 
I think uh, you'll all, you'll, someone will, you, or sorry, you'll find a flavor for everyone that you know in your life that likes to try drink coffee. Oh, so. yes, indeed. And they have some flavors that you can only get once. I, I, there's only one month right. in a year that you can get them. My favorite okay. is like that. The vanilla, the French vanilla. Oh, my uh -huh. goodness. It's amazing. You, and you can only get it in January. So put in your really? order. <laughs> oh, very, very good. good. And it's, you know, what's nice about their beans is that, well, they, they pray while they prepare them, while they're roasting, right? It's all, my goodness, they pray over all the, like, they, they're, cause they're, they're in silence and they're working and they, they're very, very traditional. They do all this the old fashioned way and their beans don't taste bitter. You know how mm -hmm. a lot of the coffee nowadays is so bitter. Well, theirs is so smooth. It's amazing. Wow, beautiful. So you can actually taste the graces that they are trying to <laughs> yes. bring bring into the product, which is great because, you know, there's lots of, you know, some of these videos I've been watching with some of the exorcists that are talking about a lot of the food is even being cursed. Yes. So what better way oh, yes. than to support <laughs> our good, you know, um, religious communities who are trying to, like you say, self-sustain and support themselves, but also knowing that you're actually consuming something that's truly you know been made with love and and god's blessings as opposed to we don't know what <laughs> these other corporations yeah. are doing um you know super important to always pray grace whenever we're gonna eat something or drink something um yes. but how much better to uh to just you know try and 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 consume these 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 types of products instead so yeah this is beautiful it's great that's right there was one exorcist who, who I've actually mentioned. He said, "You don't just bless your. You don't just have to bless your food anymore. Now you, you also have to bless anything you put in your body. Any like anything you put on your skin, your medications. You know. Yes. Uh, yes. Companies. It's interesting. I was just going through one of our local malls, and I and uh, there was a store there that was supporting, you know, local artisans or whatever. So you know you." want to go in there and check it out but man i just noticed like it's so new agey yes. so many of these products have like horoscopes and yeah. oh just well, and 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 vulgar like language and i'm just thinking i don't want to buy any of this <laughs> and and oh. who knows what they've done while they've been making them you know so just exactly. yeah kind of kind of creeps you out <laughs> which is unfortunate yes. because a lot of it, mm -hmm. it's, it's lovely, but then you're like, I don't, I can't trust it. And I, I no. would never trust giving that to someone that I love and care about. So yeah. I just think there could be a beautiful renaissance of Catholic artisans um, who are doing, you know, whatever God has gr gifted and graced them with in terms of their creative potential and, uh, yeah. and support them. Um, so, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. And then the next one is, uh, oh yeah. Okay. So the next one is simply a list that I'll give you the link to. Oh, okay. Mystic Monk Coffee. Well, you'll see it. You'll see the link in the description, but so this was a, at dioceseevents.com, mm -hmm. dioceseevents.com backslash homemade by nuns. And here you have a list of all these different convents that make things. So there's Pauline, wow. Pauline Book. There's cloister shop. They make soaps, candles, lip balm, music. They have a, a stroger <laughs> abbey. They make cookies. All good things makes prayer pillows, ceramic tiles, mm -hmm. lotions, so soaps. Um, you know, well, yeah, fudge, truffles. EWT. Oh, Xavier also found the Trappist monks on uh, the EWTN website at their shop. And he says their jams are absolutely to die for. Wow. They're delicious. Awesome. So get so many exactly farms, what we were just talking about. Yeah, this is it. This is what we need yeah. to seek out our our local artisans that are are Catholic and and creating all of these beautiful things. So yeah, that's great to see. That's a great resource. So there. Very good. You're helping these nuns as well to stay you yeah. know afloat. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Okay, now okay, this one I have been getting. So many um, requests asking where I got this beautiful Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. so I unfortunately on YouTube they don't let you t uh, put links in the description, so I I actually got banned for two days. 
because I oh, put my. a link when trying oh, dear. to <laughs> answer a question. So I won't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll just say rlgeorge.studio. Um, rlgeorge.studio. Mm. RL George is the author, the author, the the artist. And he, um, oh, his family apostolate is amazing. He does this most the most mm. beautiful paintings. Um, this one of Our Lady of uh, Tialina is actually mm. the statue that's not directly in Medjugorje, but the village beside. And it's the one that is most well known as our as the statue of Our Lady. I was uh, just, of Medjugorje, yeah. I mean. That's right. exactly what I was just going to say. I remember that from Rosary oh, Postulate yeah. as well. Um, just this beautiful great. image. And I, I do associate that with Our Lady of Medjugorje. So beautiful. Very good. Uh, this and then, and she comes with blue eyes and she comes ah. with brown eyes. Oh. Mine, oops. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Mine has the brown eyes. I don't know. I, I, I feel called to the brown eyes for some reason. She looks no. so tender and sweet. But the blue eyes, I think Our Lady is supposedly... Blue has eyes. blue eyes yeah <laughs> there regardless she is. she's just beautiful period no matter what color her eyes are <laughs> gorgeous oh. yeah and so you can get yeah. all kinds of sizes i'll show a little bit uh fine art principle here we go we'll try this so you can see his uh his other works just mm-hmm. absolutely beautiful that's Very a good. painting it's not photography. Okay. I'm so sorry. My system's a little slow. Um, there we go. So these are others that he made. Beautiful. This one is really touching too. I think mm-hmm. that's Mary Magdalene, but I'm not sure. And this right. one with God the Father. So that's rlgeorge.studio. Mm-hmm. Wonderful website. Yeah. Okay. Now the next one, I think I showed it a little bit. We saw it a little bit with my children's video. In Eternum Boutique. Yeah. And they have these gorgeous ornaments that I bought for myself, for my tree. They're mm-hmm. so lovely. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. Those are beautiful. Amazing for quality. Sure. Yes. So oh, good. Yeah. Immaculate Heart of Mary, Most Chaste Heart of St. Joseph, and uh, where's the Sacred Heart? Oh, well, the Sacred Heart is in there, but okay, I don't see it now. Anyway. Those are those are gorgeous. And those are ornaments that will go beyond the Christmas season, of course. You know, um, yeah. these I could see these being just always on display in my house. I do have... Yeah. Um, an immaculate heart. Uh, it's just a a simple, and it opens up, so I can I can keep things in there too, so like my rosaries or my um, yeah, any prayer intentions. Sometimes I'll use that with my daughter. I'll just say, oh, and then we put our prayer intention inside of Mother Mary's immaculate heart, and we close it and we leave it on the mantle mm-hmm. at her at her feet. But uh, but these are gorgeous. I mean, wow. <laughs> they are, aren't they? I'm going to put that on my Christmas wish list. (laughs) (laughs) Now this one, and I'll, the site that's on Etsy, uh, I'll, I'll, the site will be in the video description. So now this one is Mm catholiccompany.com. And I saw this bottle and I just thought, could you imagine having that on your mantle? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like a perfume bottle, but better. (laughs) Just, yeah, I mean, and, it, it's we it's should not be having just a little water bottle. It's like something that reminds you. I want I to to have it every day. You know, it, you you feel drawn to it. You want to have it every day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So beside your perfume bottle, you have this beautiful, you know, reminder to you know, bless yourself with the sacramental. I mean, holy water is very powerful, and we should be using it every day, um, whenever we feel the need. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's a great way to integrate the sacramentals into our everyday life. So that's that's, right. that's a great, great suggestion. Another beautiful thing that they had, same company, catholiccompany.com, this beautiful uh, crucifix. The only thing yeah. missing is the blood. It's not very bloody, but I thought yeah. it looked particularly, he looks so, oh dear, he looks yeah. so human. I don't know, so 3D, so... 
Yeah. Yeah. It's important, I think, to have these depictions in our Catholic homes of, yes. of the crucifixion. I mean, we, yeah, we can't be like you just mentioned sanitizing our Lord all the time in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. removing the blood. I mean, it was a bloody sacrifice. Yes, of course, the mass is an unbloody sacrifice, but that's not to say that we shouldn't be recalling to our memory wherever we can that it was a sacrifice and that we are now being called to offer our sacrifice in union with Jesus. And what better way to do that than to gaze upon, a, you know, a crucifix like similar to this one, you know, where we realize, no, he, he gave everything for us and, uh, and that we are now called to make our sacrifice as well. Right. Um, I think, unfortunately, our church has been kind of <laughs> a little bit off, off, off the mark there with, it's, it's funny. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine who's a, an, a local artist here in my area and she's helping to restore some beautiful stations of the cross in one of our churches. And she's done a beautiful job. And she mentioned that she's very intentional about putting, you know, depicting the blood streaming mm -hmm. down his face. You know, we, we have to be reminded of that when we gaze upon these, you know, this, this kind of artwork, you know, so we shouldn't be afraid of that. I think, I think there's this fear of, Oh, you know, I, I can't watch. And I, I, a lot of people uh, uh, that I know, they, they, they don't even want to watch the passion of the Christ because it's too painful for them. And I think, well, <laughs> yeah, yet, you know, just pray about that. You know, we, yes, there's that too. Yeah. I mean, they're not yeah. batting an eyelash when it comes to other sorts of violence, but I mean, anyway, that's a whole other conversation. So that that's a that's a that's a good addition to any Catholic home. <laughs> yeah. So this one um, is another Etsy store. It's called Humble Housewives. Beautiful. And they beautiful. have this. You know, the Holy Face is 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 one of the most important uh, end yeah. times devotions. And yes. uh, we had Father Carney, Father Lawrence Carney, speak yeah. to us, and he's writing another book now. And it's very powerful, very important for reparation. We can Indeed. mitigate what's coming, but we need to repair. This is the thing. So to be reminded of that. Um, yes. There we go. Yep. And yep, there's the print. And the miracle associated with the Veronica's veil image of the holy face. Um, you know, there's those yes. different images. There's the shout of Turin and then the veil of Veronica and the man of Mount Apollo. But each one is yeah. unique for different reasons. And so the veil of Veronica, when it comes to, yeah, the persecution of the church, especially from within um, and fighting against those enemies that have infiltrated, that's it's a really important devotion for our time. So would really well, encourage the viewers to go into a deeper dive with, with regard to that. And Father Carney's doing an amazing job oh, of, he is. Of, of, yeah, promoting well, that. He and said, he mentioned, you know, it's the, when we do the Holy, Holy face devotion, it's this image of uh, St. Veronica's veil. That is the one to use out of all Correct. of them. Yes. Yes. So, it's important again, because it's recalling that yeah. the, the miracle that happened in, in the 18, mid 18, 50s, I believe. <laughs> Again, not good with my dates, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's important that we use the correct as 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 accurate the as a uh, sorry of an image as possible when we are doing the holy face devotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here, there's another store, Saint. Uh, what is it called? Oh, what is it called? Oh, it's still <laughs> humble house housewide site. So they do a the you'd, okay. Some people have asked me where do we find the St. Michael uh, oil and uh, the oil of the Good Samaritan? Well, there's the St. Michael oil as a salve. Mm -hmm. And then they also have, okay, here we go. The Good Samaritan oil. Wow. Uh, but they couldn't call it, apparently somebody copyrighted the name, so they had to call it something else. So they called it oil of mercy. But it's the oil of the Good Samaritan. If you don't want to have to buy all the different oils and make it yourself, then here you can right. buy it at Humble Housewives uh, Etsy store. And so you go to Etsy and you search the store Humble Housewives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll have the link. Really good. Okay. So 
Uh, now, okay. This, okay. Some of our viewers are now getting really into the divine will devotion. Uh, and one of our, Debbie, one of our podcasters has started her own channel, in fact, um, and she teaches the divine will. Well, this will help. This is Humble Housewives again, the same store on Etsy. Mm -hmm. They are writing books for beginners on how to do the rounds and the prayers. So mm -hmm. this first book, the first 40 days, they're a little bit pricey, but I guess when you're self-publishing mm -hmm. and it's yeah. expensive. Right. Um, yeah, hopefully that'll come down with time, but exactly, yeah. Yes, they sales but they're going their their goal is to do all three you know all all the days of the year so this is the first 40 mm -hmm. days and it has the prayers it has the journal it has um wow. morning offering there we go all the beautiful prayers it makes it easier to understand how to do it because it mm -hmm. can get kind of complicated mm -hmm. so this is uh the divine will book camp uh boot camp wow. and then oh they have this book Mel, I want this book, but I can't afford it. <laughs> I, it was so Aww. beautiful. Lumen Aww. Fidelium. They put mm. together this book. It's a traditional Catholic prayers for moms, dads, families with wow. a journal in there. It's a little pricey, but it's $83 Canadian. But oh my yeah. goodness, it is beautiful. That's a treasure. Yeah, that, that's a beauty. That, that would be um, probably willed to your children. <laughs> Yeah, that's for every uh, month. Um, that's beautiful. That was what you saw there was. Uh, oh, yeah, there's the rounds. There we go. Anyway, mm. they have so many beautiful prayers in there. Family yeah, and friends. Yeah. Spiritual warfare. Yeah. So. Anyway, beautiful. So beautiful. It. Okay, next we have some jewelry. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Catholic jewelry because we have to be careful what we wear. Yes. Um, some people even wear crosses that are actually cursed. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be more aware of these, these things. Um, again, not to be paranoid, but to be very aware. Um, so right. just making sure we're purchasing from good, solid Catholic organizations and stores, online shops. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So this is the little Catholic.com. Mm. And again, yes, we are late for Christmas, but this is good for all year. This show. <laughs> That's so right. <laughs> they have, oh, they have rings. They have crucifixes and look at these mm -hmm. beautiful pendants of the three hearts. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's it's really nice to see more artists rendering that image of the three hearts, you know, the most chaste heart of St. Joseph alongside the Immaculate Heart and the Sacred Heart. It's so that's beautiful right. as St. Joseph literally comes out of the woodwork more. <laughs> that's my yes. prayer. And he's, uh, yeah, greatest hidden secret of our church. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this next one is one that you can tell us about, Mel. So this sure. is um, oh, ah yes, Jesse, Jesse Tree Treasures. Yeah, Jesse Tree yeah. Treasures. And yeah, it's so the tree that you have in the back, yeah, right? That's right. So it, yeah, the actual branch is is my own branch, but but the ornaments are from this um, company called the Jesse Tree Treasures. I bought it. Uh, quite a few years ago um i think it i think it was started by at least two or three uh mums um and it, it's a beautiful set so it comes with two boxes and this beautiful um book i don't know if you can see it on screen there um oh, so yeah. the, the the illustrations on the ornaments of course coordinate with the um the book and it takes you all the way 
again with the if you're not familiar with the jesse tree tradition which i didn't know about <laughs> and that's why i purchased it i guess about eight years ago because i was like ah i mean i knew about it but i never practiced it in the family and uh, i thought this is a good opportunity to do this with my my youngest one who's now like i say going to be nine um i mean the jesse tree is such a beautiful way to learn how you know jesus's lineage his you know he comes from a long line of 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 real people <laughs> and so um it's just a great way to immerse yourself in the story of how you know the incarnation came to came to pass was prophesied in in the old testament and then came to be fulfilled in the new testament um and each ornament is uh inspired by script uh scripture so they've imbued that there's different versions of the Jesse trees. I've noticed that over the years that some people have their own. Um, but this one just seems like it's, it's, you know, really well researched, really well illustrated. Um, it comes with, you know, I'll show you the, uh, so it comes in two of these boxes, nice, nicely packaged. Ooh. And then each one, um, each ornament is, you can place it in numerical order. I don't know if you can see that. And it has the cards that coordinate so that you know <laughs> which uh, which ornament goes with um, in, in the correct order and according and going according to the readings that are in the book. And uh, and every advent is a little bit different in terms of its length, but it comes with 28 of the regular Jesse Tree ornaments. And then for the final week, which is the week we're in right now when we're recording this, uh, the final week before Christmas, we um, there's a tradition in the church with the O antiphons. So I'm not sure if our viewers are familiar with the O antiphons, but funny enough, I've had this set for probably eight years, and my life has been so crazy and distracted that I've never done the O antiphons. <laughs> Um, so I'm confessing here on the show that this is my first <laughs> year that I'm doing this with my, my daughter and what a treasure it is. I mean, these are ever, ever ancient, ever new traditions. Um, so the O antiphons, uh, starting, I think December 17th up until Christmas Eve. And it, and it's just, again, these ornaments are really, really well made and they have, so, for example, this is December 17th. Oh, sapiencia, sapiencia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, okay. And so it'll have a little, little description of that particular, um, yeah, the gift of wisdom. So for this one, it says, Oh, come thou wisdom from on high who ordered ordered all things mightily to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to the O Israel. So the O antiphons obviously inspired the hymn, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Um, so that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's our, our Lord piercing the darkness with his light. So that's anyway, beautiful. I just thought I would, yeah, suggest that uh, as one option for our viewers to, uh, to integrate the Jesse tree into their, their tradition, uh, their Advent right. tradition. Again, it's, uh, it, it, yeah. This is what made, that's what makes childhood memory. I mean, that's some, those are memories that are golden Absolutely. for children. Yes. Hey, yes. So and it's a catechesis. It's a catechesis for all of us, but especially for our young ones, you know, um, it's something that's really easy to do. It's like a daily, a daily reading and uh, you can integrate a hymn if you can, you know, want to integrate that. And then you hang the ornament onto the tree leading up you know all the way through advent all leading up to uh to christmas eve and uh yeah it's beautiful beautiful tradition so i hope our our viewers will will consider that in the years ahead oh yes for sure <laughs> it's, and, and it seems like the ornaments were all different you could buy different sets of ornaments right different yeah there's like i say there's some different versions out there so uh mm -hmm. there's uh, lots to choose from but, uh, and again, it's, it's nice to, you know, support uh, local Catholic artisans or, or maybe not so local, but at least, you know, these good Catholic people that are trying to use their gifts and talents to, uh, to build the kingdom of, of, of our Lord. So I don't know. I just thought this was a great, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. I, like I said, I've had it for like eight or 10 years and it's uh, still holding up nicely. So they're really good quality. Yes. So this again is Jesse Tree Treasures. Yeah. It's a store on Etsy. Yes. Okay. So 
next we're going to go to uh, 10 books, 10 books.com. Um, and I found this collection of, of um, well, classics of the Catholic faith. The, it contains the imitation of Christ, the story wow. of a soul. That's the story of St. Therese of mm -hmm. the child Jesus, abandonment to divine providence, the interior castle, an introduction to the devout life. So we have St. Therese of the Child Jesus. We have St. Teresa of Avila. We have St. Francis of Sales. Abandonment wow. to Divine Providence is... Oh, I forget. Uh. Who wrote that one? Do you know? <laughs> Was it St. Francis also? I can't remember now. And yeah. then Christ, of course. So these books made saints, literally made saints. There's so many saints have read these books for centuries. So... A really beautiful set to have. Yes. Um, okay. I know. I think there should be certain staples um, in every Catholic family's library. <laughs> so, yes. you know, along with the catechism, of course, catechism of the Catholic Church, catechism of Trent. Um, there's all these beautiful traditional catechisms. And then these, you know, Tan, Tan is such an incredible publisher. Anything from Tan is rock solid and trustworthy oh, uh, to your collection. So this would be a, a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. And now, okay, I have the Liber, Liber I'm not sure mm -hmm. how to pronounce this, Liber, Liber Cristo Christ method. Christo. Mm -hmm. A yes. manual for spiritual combat. Now, this was written by Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider was on the team, on Father Chad Ripberger's team of yes. spiritual warfare. I'll mm -hmm. mention, I don't know if you can see, but I have Father Ripberger's deliverance prayers that yes. that uh you kind of need to have both right yes they don't you yes. don't have to but you why why not yeah <laughs> the deliverance no, that, prayers yeah. for use by the lady yes <laughs> hubby so <laughs> uh, deliverance prayers for use by the lady uh census tradition is pressed so you can get this on amazon um written by father Ch chad ripperger the most powerful mm -hmm. prayers for spiritual warfare and yeah. the nice thing is that he explains in it what you have authority to do because you can't just pray for just anybody um, exactly you can pray for your children you can pray for your husband but you cannot pray outside of that otherwise yeah. you you or rather you have to alter the prayer and mm -hmm. most people many people don't know this and they are getting retrib retribution from the demons because of it that's so, right yes yeah, super Very important that we get to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you say, this proper formation in what uh, our authority is, as I say, a mother and a father, a husband and wife, because God has an authority, a structure of authority. And when you go outside of that, whether well-intentioned or not, you know, the demons are very legalistic, as Father Ripperger says. Oh, yes. They're, they're like lawyers from hell, I think he said. <laughs> Somebody said yeah. that recently. I was like, yeah, that's a very good description because uh, they know the rules in and out. And mm -hmm. uh, and when we don't, we get ourselves into trouble. So I think it's super important that we uh, do our best to, you know, and that's the gift of Father Chad Ripperger in terms of his, you know, um, professional background with this uh, psychology and then of course his um work as an exorcist i mean he's yes. he's dealing with the fallout <laughs> uh, on a daily basis so he would know i would i would trust his uh his opinions on things because he's he's witnessing it um firsthand so yeah, yeah the deliverance prayers for the lady is another must i think for every catholic mm -hmm. library <laughs> and in fact i think it's in this book or is it in his book dominion which is another very yes. good one to have yes I have where that one he too, explains yeah. he explains that you cannot pray the long saint michael prayer it, it is not for the lady and Correct. so many groups of spiritual warfare do this prayer they say oh when you need to you know pull out all the stops you you go to that prayer no we no. don't we do not have authority over that prayer in fact the fact the pope yeah. when he wrote down that prayer he also had the little uh when the little prayer of saint michael made for the lady because we really we would be attacked by demons seriously yeah. if we you know, we can we can draw upon ourselves a lot of trouble by praying the yes. other one. No, I agree. Yeah, and like and like you say, most people don't know that, uh, so mm -hmm. it's not their fault. So we just have to do our best to you know inform our fellow yes. Catholics that they're stepping outside of the lines and 
and yeah, and unfortunately they can open themselves up to, you know, like you say, spiritual retaliation and um, yeah. yeah, we want to try and avoid that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so here, Dan Schneider was mm -hmm. on, isn't, is or was on Father Ribberger's uh, spiritual warfare group or mm -hmm. his, um, because when an exorcist does an exorcism, they are all, they have a support group with them to pray. So yeah. I think he was that. And so he wrote his own book, The Libra Cristo Method, A Field Manual for Spiritual Combat. Mm -hmm. It's doing really well. Apparently it's an excellent book. I don't know much yes. about it, but I put it on the list because I think we really need that now. Um, yes. It's yeah, important. I have a friend. Uh, I have a friend that lives just north, uh, a couple hours north, and uh, her traditional parish. Uh, um, the pastor there has actually done. Uh, I think it was like an eight-week course of oh. the, the. Yeah, I, eight or ten, ten weeks, I believe, like one to one and a half hour sessions. And he introduced this to uh, to his parishioners, and my friend says it was incredible, just an incredible. Um, catechesis for her and uh, I think her husband attended a couple of sessions and she was really grateful for that because um, you know as a regular lay person you can't be a prophet in your own backyard and you're trying to warn your family about spiritual warfare and, and dabbling in this and that and the other thing and 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 they kind of look at you like you're crazy but then when they hear it from an authority like you know uh, your pastor doing a, a program like this you know that it just helps a lot to, you know, further their formation and understanding of the seriousness of spiritual battle. So that's an, an amazing program from what I've heard. She had nothing but amazing things to say, but it's, it's serious too. Like you do, when yes. you go through it, I, I hear that it can be quite intense in terms of, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. you're in spiritual warfare. And of course you get the target on your back a little bit. Um, yes. So, but it's, it's super it's important humbling. to do. Yeah. And then here we have Benedictus. Benedictus is a, a mass book that comes out every month. It's a mm -hmm. subscription, a traditional Catholic companion. And it's, uh, I have Magnificat, the, the Novo Sordo version that I'm going to show you right after. So basically every month you get this, um, this book with um, all the prayers for the month, from the, for the masses every day, the liturgy of the hours, um, mass propers. And other devotions, I believe, daily meditations, feast and feria. Really nice. And the actual physical booklets themselves are so beautiful. <laughs> like, I don't know that you'd want to actually dispose of them after. It's like you want to just, you know, collect them. Um, exactly. They're so, so beautiful. Yeah. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. okay, so, and I want to show you. Okay. The Magnificat. Mm -hmm. So that's for the Novo Sordo version. It's a different company, but it's beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. And it's in that old paper like the Bibles. I love that. Yeah. You know, and they have yeah, the one for children as well that comes out every month. No. Oh, does it? Oh, no. Wait, does it come every month? No, I don't. Yes, it does come every month, right? Oh, I, think I didn't does. even know. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Really good to know that. So there we go. And okay, next we have, oh my goodness, time is flying too fast. Okay, so next what I thought I would do is I would get a, a compilation of books that speak of the life of Christ. Our Lord and Our Lady showed their life to, to a few different mystics and asked them to write it down. Well, the 101 Foundation, amazing company wow. uh, one, 101 foundation.com they're all about the spread of devotions all kinds of devotions and some of their their, their things are ah, i have even. that i have this book the life of saint joseph as well it is remarkable Beautiful. if you go on amazon it's like a hundred dollars because it's so rare oh, but you wow. go 101 foundation.com and it's ten dollars they bring Perfect. the price down so that anybody can buy this Good. book was discovered it was written by an abbess i think 300 years ago 400 years ago mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was just discovered recently in their library the library of mm -hmm. the convent it was her notes from the apparitions of saint joseph where he described his life yes phenomenal book and yes. apparently in the end times we're going to discover that he we're going to find his body yes and I've there's a possibility that. i heard that we might discover that he too is immaculate he has uh, had an immaculate 
option or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. 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 We're that's going to discover big things about St. Joseph. So I highly recommend it. I have it. I haven't read it, but it's, it's really from the little bit that I read, it was very Same. beautiful. Yes. Yes, it is. Another good one for the collection. <laughs> Another good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one now is becoming popular again. It was on the index back then, and now it's um, back. The Poem of the Man God. Yeah. And by Maria Valtorta. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It is so beautiful. This is the book that got me to love Our Lady and to want to know her messages. My mother gave, my grandmother gave me this, the first book of 11. She said, you start with this. And so wow. the mo I was 16 and I was hooked. And just the descriptions, when she, when Our Lady describes her life, she describes our Lord. It's just so beautiful. And all the little details, you know, you, you really see the heart of a mother. And yes. in fact, um, Father Michel has started speaking about it on his website. You can see he's given a few courses on the, on the series. Good. And uh, Xavier has now started reading it. Ron, um, you know, our, our channel owner as and you know podcaster extraordinaire he he is also studying maria valtorta now it's a it's big and it's beautiful it's yeah beautiful. yeah it really is these are you know again private revelation so we're not mm -hmm. you know, beholden to believe it but man we'd be missing out <laughs> oh, if we yes. didn't open our hearts to these beautiful like you say details you know um it's like putting more flesh on the bones of our faith and 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 adding these beautiful brush strokes to to the story and so yeah uh, it's that's a good one <laughs> and then here we have the complete visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich mm. my, that was the second series my grandmother gave me there were three books in mine and mine is actually like a photocopy of the original first edition it's oh, so wow cool. all in french wow <laughs> and uh, all the tiny tiny print but yeah. it is so beautiful to read. Again, the details. And this is, and Catherine Emmerich is the one whose visions were the inspiration for Mel Gibson's The Passion. And mm -hmm. so he tried to use a lot of the details that she gave, that she saw, because she saw it like a film. But then yes. she was taken into the scene and actually held our Lord when he was born and actually stood at the foot of the cross with Our Lady. And, and so... The wow. details that she gives are phenomenal. And apparently, architects are using her visions and finding the very things that she's describing, where she said that they are. It's Yeah, it's incredible. I think I remember when we did the consecration to St. Joseph, Monique, um, I think Father Calloway had mentioned in the, the wedding ring of St. Joseph and Mary. I think it was uh, uh, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich who revealed the location of that. I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it was there was some reference to her and her vision, and that's how uh, they were given this. Um, you know, beautiful. It's a relic that I believe is um, in a church just outside of Assisi in Italy, oh. and there is a local tradition, from what I remember from the Consecration to Saint Joseph book. Um, and I think it's in August again, don't quote me on it, but they, uh, the locals there will actually, um, bring out this beautiful ring, which is very unique. It's made mm -hmm. out of a precious stone of some sort. Um, it's almost like a milky white ring. It's funny when I first saw it, I thought it looked like a lifesaver. <laughs> yes, me too. But it like, looks okay, very different. Really yeah, but it was it was beautiful. And uh, so they have this veneration of the relic um, and they bless married couples. And how beautiful is that? Like, could you imagine if they actually sent that relic around the world oh to goodness. then, you know, restore marriage? <laughs> because my goodness, the world is lost. Um, I just think that would be incredible. But yeah, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich is a real gem of uh, another, you know, mystic who can help us just, like you say, grow deeper in our, our faith and our devotion. And it's, uh, and she suffered, right? I mean, she, a lot of these mystics physically suffered. Oh, um, she did. So, she would experience them. I remember that I, what I read was that she was uh, called to pray at, in the center of town in the middle of the night. There was a huge crucifix. And as she was walking, she could feel the devil behind um, her as a rabid, yeah. big rabid um, dog. 
and he Ew. was salivating all over her. And she just dismissed him like he was nothing. Just wow. Like, yeah, whatever. Amazing. She said yeah. you don't give him any any attention, you know. Yes. I've I've heard that several occasions from different, you know, either priests or exorcists or stories from the, the saints, you know, they just kind of the worst the, the 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 thing you could do to the devil is laugh at him and he'll just he hates it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, but you know Gemma Galgani yes. Gemma, Gemma Galgani was known for that too. She, she there was a priest that came to during one of her ecstasies at one point and and he <laughs> felt the dog by his like on his leg and he asked what was that? He felt something and she said, Oh, that's just it. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> that's just it. Man. So, so here, this one here is the mystical city of God. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Again, uh, Our Lady gave her, told her story, her life story to the Venerable Mary of Agrita. And yes. it's a huge volume. Sometimes it comes in four volumes. Mm -hmm. All these books I'm showing you now are on Amazon. The mystical city of God. Amazing. This one is an abridgment. Yes. Oh, sad. But um, mm -hmm. I have the four, the collection of four as well. Oh, wow. Very nice. Wow. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So, okay, so Mystical City of God. Uh, nope, not this one. No, not this one. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we're we're reach, re reaching the end. Okay. Ah, yes, okay. So this one is, okay. I'm not sure what you're seeing because I'm just seeing the website. Oh, there we yeah. go. Through this the eyes of Jesus, yeah. Is one of my favorite series. Mm -hmm. I have it here, and I have actually the other two volumes here. Wow. And it's it's written by a mystic called uh, Alan Carver Ames. He's in Australia, down under. Wow. And he, oh, my goodness. The, it is so beautiful. Jesus um, sh uh, dictated to him his public ministry what his life during those three years of his public ministry and when you read that you realize just how jesus couldn't be anyone else but god i mean his responses to people's questions you know when when he describes judas sleeping on the bag of money and he describes him with so much love you know and as a child you know being consoled by his bag of money and i mean just how he spoke to the pharisees all these stories that we don't know that that were not that never made it into the bible so witty and smart brilliant and just wow you know only god could come up with answers like this it is right. such a great story so there are three books and oh. highly recommended through the eyes of jesus so there we go that's going to be on my wish list now, too. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Oh, yes. I would be remiss. Oh, no, no, no. Can't. No, no. I don't want to leave the website. Let's see here. So uh -oh. gonna... Of course, mm -hmm. I have to mention our own Mother and Refuge books. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sorry. The spinning wheel. There we go. So Ron has written these wonderful books. Pieta, he's curated prayers, you know, Pieta of the Apocalypse, uh, end times devotions that are pretty, pretty particularly important, spiritual warfare um, prayers, and then apparitions of, of Holy Mother Mary for children. And then wow. have, yes, here's the latest one that he, the other ones are not him, but the Most Holy Rosary, that's the newest one. Mm. Uh, but with um, mysteries, by Father Dolindo, by oh, oh, oh that's um, Maria Valtorta, I think, and Catherine mm -hmm. Emmerich, and uh, Luisa Picaretta. Wow, so, very powerful! So, mm -hmm. you can get them on Amazon, you can get just look up Mother and Refuge on Amazon, or you can go directly to the Mother and Refuge uh, website and, and find them there. Very and good. Then, Okay, so we had Father Lawrence Carney on our show, and he wrote a book. No, that's not it. That's Oh, that's Daniel O'Connor. Well, we'll talk about Daniel O'Connor. So <laughs> Daniel wrote this book about aliens. Only Man Bears His Image. It's a, it's a brick. Daniel writes huge, huge books. 
<laughs> fantastic material. He is so he's brilliant. And he, mm-hmm. you know, breaks down the whole UFO deception. Right. Because it's we're going to hear more and more about it. They're going to try yes. to make us believe that these aliens are coming. They're demons. And um we're yeah. not to believe that. I mean, and Father Michel explained that some of these demons have given us technology that mm-hmm. Satan's are using. They're trying mm-hmm. to make chimeras who are that they're going to release, you know, um, after the warning. Wow. Satanists are talking about it. Ex-Satanists have spoken of the tunnels underground and how under castles they have these caves where they have these creatures, these chimeras that are built with He's, you know, built. They're not built. They're genetically yeah. modified beings right. that are put together using satanic technology from these demons and uh, the Nephilim and all that. Anyway, so it's funny how, you know, at first I was very skeptical, but then you hear from different people who are not related the same story. Yeah. Right. And uh, so anyway, he talks about this deception of uh, UFOs and, and whatnot. Wow. So, Okay. Um, the Secret of the Holy Face. There we go. There's Father Lawrence Carney's book. Okay. I still have the uh, Through the Eyes of Jesus on the screen, so I don't know if it's... Oh, you oh, see- oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So you just to make, There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, did you, you didn't see the other one then, right? You no. Yeah. One. Sorry. I thought I should. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just, yeah. Me, yeah I, no problem. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So let's go back to Daniel. Oh, no. Now it's going to Mother and Refuge. No, no. Yeah, so. the Mother and Refuge ones didn't come up either. So you might want to just at least flash them oh. on the screen. And then, oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, no. That's good. The challenges know. of technology. <laughs> so sorry, Ron. Oh, dear. Okay. So Pieta of the Apocalypse, the end time spiritual go. warfare, apparitions of Holy Mother Mary for children. Beautiful book. I bought this for my godchildren. The mm. End Time Spiritual Warfare. Yes, I mentioned that. And the latest, The Most Holy Rosary, Prayers and, and Mystical Meditations of Saints and Seers. Beautiful. So there we go. Perfect. And okay, Daniel O'Connor's book. Mm-hmm. So these are our guests now that I want to show you their books. That's mm-hmm. his name. Wow. Only man bears his image. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Okay. And The Secret of the Holy Face. Yeah. A beautiful book by Father mm-hmm. Lawrence. Hardy. And he has yeah. one that he's going to be publishing in January with the prayers. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. Another yeah, one it's, it's, it's great to uh, hear of these um chapters that are forming all over you know in terms of small groups coming together and praying the um the holy face chaplet and devotional prayers um i'm part of one of uh a local group that's just started here last month so it's uh yeah something for our viewers to discern uh if there is something they want to be become a part of as well you can enroll at the um arch confraternity of the holy face in tours front france um so yeah there's uh there's a lot there and it is a very powerful devotion for our time yeah it really is and you know Mm -hmm. he is the spiritual director of the the benedictines Benedictines of mary so it's a small world yeah small catholic world i know yeah it was wonderful to hear that he was sister wilhelmina's spiritual director for about six years Imagine so, that, eh? yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, God trying to just tell us, you know, he's speaking through these connections as well. So, yeah, it's wonderful. And now last but not least. Yes. Xavier's book. Xavier, our good friends of you. So Beautiful. Xavier's book is a treasure. Yes. This one is going to be it a is. classic, I predict. I think so. I believe um, so, too. Yeah. It is the only book where you will find the secrets, like, you know, those those favorite apparition sites that we know. The whole story is there, but he's also included the stories that were not told that were hidden by the Vatican in the secret archives of the Vatican. Um, yeah. So he was working with Father uh, Monsignor 
well, Monseigneur René Laurentin, Father Laurentin, for several mm -hmm. years. And mm -hmm. they, they, they and priests related to Father Laurentin and his team discovered these amazing secrets that were meant yeah. to be shared. Yes. Our Lady wanted them shared, and they're still not, the Vatican still hasn't released them. So they released them. Mm -hmm. yeah. released them here. The third yes. secret of Fatima, the full secret of Fatima, is here in this Amen. book. Good. So you're not going to find it elsewhere. This is the book to get. This is a refuge for your refuge library. Yes. Get a That's few right. copies. Oh my goodness! I have so many friends who tell me they've been buying so many copies and they can't they they can't hold on to them. They're they're constantly yeah. giving them away. People are well, fascinated with this book. That's my uh, my case. I just lent it to a, a a lady I just met here too who uh, who doesn't know much about Our Lady's messages. And I said this is the go to uh, resource um, to catch up. <laughs> and she was so so grateful for that. Um, so I was happy to pass it along to her. So, yes, highly recommend this uh, as a gift for those uh, of your friends and family who are looking to uh, to know what Our Lady has been trying to tell us. <laughs> yeah, and where you know, there's a lot of funny stuff going on behind the scenes uh, with with certain people trying to quell our, our our mother's messages and and the fullness of the truth of her messages. So we have to be really prayerfully discerning and so i thank xavier for yeah. doing what he did with that book so yeah oh, yes i forgot bit. one more book by the way ah. if you want mm -hmm. mystery oh yeah <laughs> in the 33rd degree, degree. Yeah. <laughs> i really want to have him on i father yeah Charles, father trust I almost had him. Well, I have oh. him. I have him. I just have to find a good topic to discuss. Okay. Because, okay. Um, well, yes. So, but he's amazing. And yeah. He's been hiding. You know, they're after him because of what he knows. He was there during mm -hmm. Vatican II. He knows what was happening behind the scenes. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And in this book, he describes, uh, he explains what happened with was it a murder of Pope Paul, uh, Pope um, John Paul the First, or right, you know? right? So yeah, he, I know. And There's... I mean, he himself, Father Charles Muir, should write a book of his own life. He has lived the life of mm -hmm. my goodness. It would make an incredible movie. Mm -hmm. You know, called in to mediate in hostage takings. Wow, his good friend, an Archbishop, was kidnapped. I think uh, I don't know which patriarchate it was, but wow. he saw horrible, horrible things, very sad things. And I think he was. Did he go in the jungles? I think he opened uh, orphanages. I think mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, I can't remember, but I know that um, Cardinal Gagnon did as well. He was the assistant of Cardinal Gagnon, who was tasked by. Pope Paul the no, he was tasked by Pope Paul the sixth, but before that by um, Pius the twelfth, I think um, it was. To, one of the two, I can't remember now. Oh, oh anyway, he worked for both. <laughs> but anyway, he worked for so he to to investigate the Curia, the Free, Freemasonry in the Curia, wow. and he came out with his report, and the popes didn't want to see it. Mm -hmm. It was too. They didn't know how to tackle it yeah. because Freemasonry is so ingrained in the church nowadays yep. so we really need to pray for them and it's not about condemning you know we no. we don't want to condemn all these people we want to no. pray for their conversion yeah, for their conversion exactly yeah. i mean because uh, they need our support that's right that's right i mean um, i think it was to saint catherine of siena in mm -hmm. the dialogues of saint catherine that our lord said you know you you if you're priest is not good it's your fault that's because right because you're not yeah. praying for him so that's why he is so upset when we speak against priests or against yes. the pope again because yeah. it's our fault that's right we they need yeah. they depend we, on our prayers they're on the front lines for the devil right. so yeah we get the priests and the and the clergy and the pope that we deserve right so yes. <laughs> we better be mindful about our words of criticism we should be speaking with our knees and yeah. and um our sacrifices for them um i mean we can certainly make our observations and yeah. criticisms of their you know actions or inactions but to judge them personally oh, mm, no we no oh no we, yeah 
That's right. That's right. And it is, line. it's all about conversion, right? I mean, I think it was uh, Maximilian Kolbe. I mean, there's a whole laundry list of saints who knew about all of this infiltration too. And, and it, it's about praying for conversion, not condemnation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the line to go to when we get, when we want to pull our hair out is the one of our Lord on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, with this, Mel, I think we're going to close up. And <laughs> okay. uh, it's been so much fun having you on. Thank you so much for oh, joining me. Oh, my pleasure, here. Monique. I, uh, I love you dearly. And I love, you know, the work that you're doing. Uh, and and Ron and Xavier and all of your co-hosts on the channel. So yeah, just all for God's greater glory, oh, the conversion, you, conversion of souls. So yeah, let's. Hopefully, we can do it again. I mean, I hope <laughs> yes, somewhat Indeed. helpful and just yeah, just uh, it's all about sharing the joy of our faith, right? And yeah, we just came off of uh, Gaudete Sunday, so we need to be emanating the joy of Christ and uh, and sharing that with the world. So yeah, yes, I wish yeah. all of you. All of the viewers, a very Merry Christmas <laughs> uh, and uh, a good uh, a good Advent leading up to that and a very, very Merry and Blessed Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mel. We're so grateful. Well, God thank bless you. everyone. Thank you so much for watching. This might be a keeper for presents throughout the year. So, so. <laughs> don't hesitate to pass this on to share this. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. God bless you and may the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge. God bless you, everyone. Bye.